Um, I think we're neglecting to put forward one of the reasons that Ben Bernanke is actually employing quantitative easing. Anthony, you invoke private debt. I've talked about private debt on this program over and over and over. The United States is at historical levels of debt, total debt, household debt, on and on. What he's using this easy money to do is offset all that junk, to offset the deflationary effect of retiring all that debt. So from households to banks who are sitting on bad loans and using that money to offset, what he's doing, Matt, in the end, Honestly, I don't know that he is trying to lower unemployment. What he's trying to do is keep it from dropping or skyrocketing up to 20% unemployment. It's always, I'm not convinced he's trying to fill the bathtub up. He's trying to stuff the drain. He's so it's trying a short to keep term fix, you're saying. It, from it, drowning in 20% unemployment. Where, where I think our disagreement is rooted in is what like works means in this scenario. What does it mean that quantitative easing worked or didn't work? Does this mean that we avoided 20% right. unemployment? Well, we can't really know that. So that can be the argument that the Fed, you know, the great thing about QE1 and QE2, sure. Operation Twist, is that it prevented us from going into this hypothetical hole. Right. Right. That's it, if we look at quantitative easing, we say it didn't work because unemployment still is really high. I'd say it's a little bit closer to 15 percent. And we say, actually, you know, the, the fact that we are now several years away from the end of the recession, which was in 2009, and we're still at weak GDP growth, that actually maybe what this did was it just is sort of dragging out this economic pain. We could have been growing now. Undoubtedly. Then in our perspective, it, it didn't work from this idea that we could have been better, like we could have dealt with this pain up front instead of dragging it out. And so we're dealing, you and I debated this, we won't pretend we didn't in the green room. What we sure. deal with in the end is two unknowns. Right. What is worse, the unknown of potential 20, 30 percent unemployment and the bread lines that accompany that or this drawn out process of sluggish well, also Let's take a look at this from a global perspective, too, not just the United and States. And potential inflation. We have inflation. I'll get to it in a moment. But this is a global issue. This isn't just the United States having issue with its economy right now, trying to stimulate it through more quantitative easing. We have the Bank of Japan doing the same thing. And what is happening is the Bank of Japan, by doing this, devaluing their currency because it doesn't help exporters. It helps. It, it actually hurts their economy. So they want the yen to go down. Down. The same time the United States wants the U.S. dollar to fall, ECB wants the euro to, to, to come down a bit. So then getting to what you just mentioned, Will, inflation. Matt, do you see an issue with the fact that we're printing more U.S. dollars, all the quantitative meetings that we've had, and, it, and the Fed still says inflation is not a concern at this point? The worst uh, news of all is that the Swiss, uh, the Swiss government has pegged their currency to the euro, so you can't even have a flight to a, a, a properly uh, non-insane <laughs> currency. Um, look, here's a few things that everybody in the world agrees on. Uh, there was a housing collapse that ruined the economy, right? And it was based on the fact that there was free, cheap money uh, pumped into the system by Alan Greenspan in the wake of the dot-com bubble uh, imploding in the 9-11 attacks. There isn't anyone really who disagrees with that. So what we've done in that time, and this created a huge amount of junk on banks, uh, balance sheets, it, it, household debt, people are underwater. So what we're doing in response to that is making money even cheaper and mm -hmm. encouraging people to uh, invest in things uh, uh, based on kind of bubble economics even more than we did before. So at some but point, you know, we're sure if I could just respond to that analogy, because it's, it's, it's really good. And it's undoubtedly true, as you said, Matt, that the Federal Reserve is responsible for malinvestment in bubbles. But the role of the Federal Reserve is also to take down, to, to raise up those bad periods, right? They create these manias and to, it's to, to keep the depths from getting slow. In other words, heroin, yes, they're injecting heroin to the economy. But in order to get you off heroin, they have to give you a little methadone. But here, so I'm the same I don't, I don't I trust I the dealer. Hold on. Yeah. If, if, if I can. I mean, I'm hearing QE2, QE3, Operation Twist. This all sounds very nautical. You've mentioned bathtubs <laughs> and water. But it seems, yes, it seems to me it's also a distraction from some of the other things that have been weighing on our job creators, like Obamacare and impending taxation and cost of Obamacare. Uh, we have the fiscal cliff that's coming up at the end of the year. How is this addressing any of these much larger business decisions that are his small? job? But, but this <laughs> is, so why, so why well, are we doing this? Actually, this? Why this are we doing this? Because it's actually, something that they can do. Right. This is something that this the, the response to the fiscal cliff. Right. It is Ben Bernanke, because no one in Congress is doing anything. Can this I jump in real quick? And just, this is Bernanke's perspective. Is like there's no there's no one in Congress acting. Fed so President to... Richard, uh, Dallas Fed President Richard Fisher just came out this week, and he said this in, in regards to exactly what you said, Anthony. He said, any country that's ended up having the central bank substitute for tough decision making, as you just said, for fiscal authority, you end up as Argentina, a nationalist China, or even worse, Zimbabwe. So basically what he's saying is Congress is doing nothing. It is now forced on the Fed to do something because Congress is doing nothing. I didn't realize and that's Peter not the best Schiff way. 
moved to the New York Fed. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, Fisher, yeah. Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Fisher's a Fisher's a very very, he's very a hawk. smart he's man. A big yes, he's very, yeah, he, he's sure. he's sort of on this. But actually, what Fisher's also said, uh, in sort of in the wake of QE3, is that what the Fed is doing now is basically fiscal policy. There's nothing really monetary sure. about this monetary right. policy. It's sort of acting in place. And the problem. So then, what is the chance of success? Well, by the way, Fisher voted for this current round of quantitative easing. The, he, this is <laughs> one of the biggest problems with the Federal Reserve is. Is, you know, no one really always practices what they sort of like preach on the side. Uh, you know, get rid of the Fed. No. But it's a poor 